we're gonna just be working on a little box layering pattern. It's great for those mid-length shapes, uh, cutting like with lots of texture, lots of curl. All right, so I've got that combed out. I'm gonna scrunch it a little bit to bring out some of that texture. Mannequin doesn't have a lot. This is a haircut that, this is like a, a cut that on a guest I'm gonna be doing when they basically have a little more texture, a little more curl or something. So a great starting place for curly shapes. So I'm gonna take a section, a guide section right down the center here that's about the size of the comb. And I'm gonna get on top of this and then I'm gonna work up from the bottom and just being really loose. So if, if she has a lot of texture, I can come in here and kind of soften through that and then I can come back and cut my line up square. And it's just very loose, very delicate. So the first pass is coming up from the bottom. The second pass is coming down from the top just to loosen that up. But I don't wanna do the whole pass from the top down to the bottom because what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a tendency, I just know this from years of experience, you're gonna have a tendency to shorten your layers up top, which will create that roundness that we don't wanna create with the box layering batter. We wanna leave the weight of that top to sit down and like a hold our curl pattern down a little bit so we don't get that kind of Christmas tree shape uh, towards the top. Taking the entire top of that first guide section and taking, uh, kind of pieing it off and traveling that section forward, coming across the top of the guide so we have that in our hands. So when I take that first cut pass, I wanna make sure that my weight, my shape is coming square up Right, so you can go a little shorter if you want, and then it'll, that'll create more layering pattern, or you can leave it a little longer and work with the curl pattern and let it do its thing, right? But the key is picking out where you wanna start that pattern coming up, how much weight on the length you want, and then that kind of determines. So if I chose that, that's the weight of, of the length I want, that kind of determines where my cut can start when I come up. So I know that in my hands, it's right there, so when I come and I start my guide, I'm not gonna cut that hair. I'm gonna use that as the guide to kind of walk up the layering pattern and cut that, that line, that shape, really square to you, right? Really square from a profile uh, vision of that shape. So that's why when I'm cutting this first section, my head's off to the side so I can watch my shape come up. When you stand behind it and look at it, it's kind of amateur hour because you can never see the actual shape that you're building. Good hairdressers tend to put their heads to the side and watch the shape that they're building. And then hairdressers who are not quite so experienced are gonna tend to uh, keep their head behind the section and, and cut. And it's kind of blind cutting because you can't really see the shape you're building. You're just following a guy. Right? And what we know from that is following guides is not always the best thing for that upscale hairdressing. All right, so I also have the choice here to kind of come in and soften that weight out. I don't ever want to cut into the very top. I want to leave that for the end. I just want to soften that shape so we can get, we can open up any texture that they have and get it moving then. And as you notice, I always will come through and start to finger this into place. Typically, if I'm in the salon and I'm working this shape into them, I'm probably gonna have some light, light mousse, no tack mousse in there. If I don't, I'm probably gonna have some sort of light spray gel, and then I'm gonna salt spray it right before I, I uh, diffuse it. Taking the very top of that guide section, pieing it to the side, and basically just traveling that guide off to the side, and then repeating the process. So I don't want, because I'm working with a razor and I'm working very fast. I don't wanna pull the hair from the last section and use it as this section, although I am pulling over the top of the guide, so I'm not gonna cut into that. That's really just to make sure that all of the hair gets cut in that section. I don't have any like long bits in between. What I'm really, my guide is really just how much weight I want in that length. So once again, I'm back on that, and I'm just watching my shape as I walk it up and how that layering uh, starts to affect the, the texture of their hair. So I can do this a couple different ways. Just walking that up. Whatever is most comfortable for you. Now a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do that kind of that texturing pass first and then I'll cut my, and I'll do that on the next section so you can see it and then I'll cut. But I'm watching the whole way. As soon as I'm done I'm cutting because if I wanted a little bit of weight off of that top I could just loosen that up now or I could cut a little more texture because the razor 
is far more visual than scissor cutting, I wanna make sure that when I'm razor cutting, that I'm getting pretty much the finished shape as I go. And I really care about how it affects the texture that they have. So just walking through this. So pulling that up, now I wanna be really careful because the length is actually coming up the head. It's, it's starting to creep up to the side. So I wanna go a little higher than I did before on my starting section. So that's why I'm watching how much weight is behind that ear because we can get really light there um, very, very quickly. So pulling that section up, staying center of that section, center of that guy, and then breaking that up slightly and then working my way up square. And then just a little pass on the very tip top of that just to open that up. It's gonna be a little harder to get layering on the sides with someone this straight. So I'm gonna like lift that layering pattern up as I come forward. As I work this forward, I'm staying pretty vertical. I'm gonna take a little bit of the last section, but that's just more to make sure everything gets cut. And that's not my guide. My guide is once again, the weight at the bottom. But now what I'm gonna do here is really pay attention to the top of my cut. So I'm coming up square but I wanna make sure that I don't get too weighty at the top because there's more weight at the top on this. And then I can just texture this out as we come forward. In this section, because the head kind of dips in towards the face, when I pull back to vertical, I'm actually inverting it slightly and creating more weight towards the face. So you'll notice on like thicker haired clients right here and now, where after I cut that uh, weight out and then that length out, I wanna then come in visually and start to see what, what I'm getting around the face so I can visually pop it in right now, exactly my end point. So if you notice, I took out a lot of uh, weight and then I like just opened up the face ever so slightly. I want it to be a razor cut, so I don't wanna do anything too perfect, but then visually kind of cutting some, some texture and shapes in there. Like right here, if this is getting a little too heavy, I can now come in uh, and just shape with their natural texture in there and start to get some life that I wasn't getting. Or right here, if I wanted to, I could come in on that bang and really shape that bang out the rest of the way, which makes sense to me for how I want that, to, that um, exit point of the bang to hit the entrance point of the forward graduation. And then I might even do something like, just like a little random bit here or there, just to like pop the face. That's always, you know, the thing about razoring is, it's very visual. So if I wanted something there, I could just put it there really quickly. Crossing the entire top of the, of the first section. And I'm gonna turn this because I really want you to see the profile more than anything else. My head is always gonna be on that right and just softening through that. And then I can come up from the bottom and start to work it square up the head, so that's what I'll do. And just real lightly and watching that shape. So if like uh, this corner is too heavy, I could just pop that corner real quick as I came forward. Last section in the back, so we're gonna transfer that. And because I care more about how she sees this from the front and her, her shape from the front, I'm going to bring the hair on this last back section to the side. Basically this box layering pattern is going to be for my wavier to curlier clients uh, most of the time. Walk in that section forward one, just traveling the guide, going center of section, really watching how much weight I got because she's getting real light here on this hip, on this mannequin. Just breaking that up a little bit. I want a little more layering pattern, so I'm gonna come and just kill ever so slightly that weight at the top. Now, I know I can go back in dry and do whatever I want, so I don't wanna go crazy with the top. That top is one of the most important things I can do. This side, I'm in no danger of cutting any short stuff here with the razor, so I don't have to be as careful. I can just kind of get in there, once again, not cutting the very first section, and then just slowly squaring that off. And by slowly, I mean I went really fast. And then same thing as the other side, just kind of 
working in a shape that I want to see around the face. She's already got some of that texture and stuff that I wanted on the other side. So just going to do the same thing, open up that bang there on this side. A little more texture here right behind. Just a couple more pieces coming towards the face. Really letting it be a razor cut and have like very loose balance. All right, let's dry her off. So I hit that with a little bit of salt spray and then I finished it on the ends just with a little bit of spray shine. Not too much, just enough to get um, it's not looking so matte. Basically casting that, drying that with that salt spray, casting that curl. And then as I dry past dry, I'm gonna soften that curl back out. And then just a touch of the spray shine, whether you wanna spray it in your hands and then scrunch it in or spray it directly on the ends, either one of those will allow you to like kind of soften that cast up. So this haircut, beautiful haircut for layering. Most of the time I'm doing it with my more textured haircuts. It's square, but it doesn't look square at the end. It will naturally round with the shape of the head. So that's the point of it. It's a great starting place. You can actually add more layering or take more weight off of the corner or the bottom at any point. But what I really like about it is one, using that razor for most of your hair cutting because it's gonna give you the opportunity to like lean heavily on your visual eye, right? That's the separator between good and great. So get there, use that eye, use that razor, finish with scissors if you want. Um, I will finish with scissors to add pop a little more texture, some pieces in there. The razor, I try to get almost all the way to my finished haircut, like from the get, that's important to me because I like the playfulness of the razor and getting to like a softer, less controlled, less solid shape. The whole reason we, we want to be creative um, in the salon, I, I for one like the challenge of not having to make a shape look the same. I always try to get every shape to look different. So I style differently, I cut differently. I'm always challenging myself to uh, learn more with any given texture. I think that's important for us in the salon to always be challenging ourselves to get better. Uh, you're, you're gonna have, if you have a career as long as mine, you're basically always gonna have that opportunity to perfect everything over time. The real key is to kind of get in there and, and make some mistakes. Take a mannequin head, destroy it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. What matters is that you're, you're learning to work shape in and you're visually starting to lean heavily on that eye. Appreciate it, I hope you guys learned something. Um, that is the box layering pattern.